handoff to Jonathan oh. Taylor. Hughes hole. He's at the 30. He's going to go. 10, 5, touchdown. Jonathan Taylor made a man miss the line of scrimmage and then runs it into Pater. And a one-handed INT. Are you kidding me? Kenny Moore. What a play by Naheem Hines. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What is going on, Colts Nation? And welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. It is finally here. You guys have been waiting for it a long time. I know I have. Derek Larger's Mock Draft 2.0. I am so pumped for this, man. I'm so pumped for this. <laughs> for you guys' knowledge, we're going to do two different scenarios with Mock Draft. So Derek's going to do one here, going to talk about what if the Colts stay at 21, some options there, then go along in the draft. And then the next video will be on potential trade backs, acquiring more picks, and going from there. So Derek... Without further ado, we're just going to hop right into this. Go ahead with pick number 21 for the Indianapolis Colts, in your opinion, in the 2021 NFL Draft. Oh, man, yes. It's been a while, and I've had like some extra time to think about these things because you know, with the Wentz thing going down and all of this and that, you know, I finally was able to sit down and just kind of estimate what I think is going to happen here. So, Let's assume this one where the Colts don't trade back and they stay right where they're at. And with the 21st pick, with that first round pick, I have the Colts selecting Liam Eichenberg, left tackle from Notre Dame. I think right here, unless there is a guy at 21 that Ballard just cannot pass on, I think ultimately we're going to get that tackle in the first round. And I think Eichenberg will be that option because, again, Eichenberg's not falling to late second round. I know that for a fact. Eichenberg makes total sense here, you know, with his pass pro abilities. The guy is just a great pass blocking kind of guy. And I think being right next to Quentin Nelson, it'd be ironic to have the two fighting Irish right next to each other. But I think they would thrive off of each other very well. Eichenberg with good size, good strength, and good pass pro protection and good fundamentals. I think would be a guy that you could fit right in at the very beginning and feel confident knowing he's going to groom into a left tackle that you would love to have. So Eichenberg's going to be that first pick in the first round here. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I like it from a Notre Dame fan standpoint. I mean, yes, absolutely. A little bit surprised that you took him this early, quite honestly, because we know how much depth there is at tackle. I'm kind of a little bit like surprised you took him, but you know, nonetheless, Eichenberg's a good pick. I think, you know, he's a very good offensive lineman. We've already touched on him a little bit because I obviously I drafted him in my last mock draft. We won't get into really major details, but you're right. He's really good in pass pro. I think he's one of the most pro ready tackles here in this draft. So I like this pick fills that position of need right away there. So yeah, I like this pick from, from Liam Eichenberg here. I mean, it would be great, man, to have those former teammates there plan. I love it, dude. Liam Eikenberg, I I would be totally happy with that. Your offensive line issue is solved at that point. Um, I know he's a, he's a rookie, but I'd rather have a rookie who's ready to plug in than play as opposed to a guy maybe a little bit later on. So I totally get that as well. But uh, yeah, solid first pick there, I think. All right. Awesome. And with the second round pick, I'm going to have them picking Paulson Adebo, cornerback from Stanford. Now, a lot of okay. you probably know this name from my mock draft from last time where I had him in the third round. Well, the Colts don't have a third round pick anymore. So I think here and what you're going to see from Adebo as we learn more about his tendencies and everything else is he fits so perfectly in what the Colts are trying to get from a corner, which is why I think he might be ranked a little further behind uh, some of these other corners that might come up early in the second round. But Adebo, I think with his size, with his strength, and due to the fact that he's played in several different schemes and he fits in just about any scheme you want to throw it at his way, I think that just with the scheme flexibility helps him to be able to rise up in draft boards because whoever gets him, ultimately they're going to be able to plug him into a scheme right away and he'd be able to figure it out pretty quickly. He's got the good size for, he's got good instincts, you know, obviously still has some things to learn about, you know, being able to fight for the ball and sometimes has an issue with reading receivers when, you know, you're running off at a vertical route, but 
ultimately, I think Adebo just has really good function in his hips. He's just really good with turning his hips. He does really good with mirroring his defenders. He just does a really good job with most of it. And I think he's one of the more pro-ready corners outside of the first round for the NFL. So that's why Adebo falls right here in the second round for me. Yeah. I mean, I think I noticed a trend here. We're talking about guys who are pro ready that can plug in right away. I think that's exactly what the Colts need right now with, with how we know how much they, they feel like they can compete and their window is just cracking open now. So, you know, with this pick, I think it's pretty obvious that you addressed pass rush in some way in free agency at this point, because I would argue that corner and, and edge are the two biggest positions of need on that defense. But yeah, you know, you solve your corner position, your corner problem there. I know some Colts fans are going to have some hesitations and reservations about getting another defensive back in round two. This will be the third time if this does happen. So I totally get that. But yeah, I mean, I think you just got to keep throwing darts at that sometimes and do your homework, obviously. And obviously the Colts will, it's funny because we were on Lawrence's stream and we were kind of talking about Ballard has not had a great history so far in set the second round in terms of drafting corners and defensive linemen. So a little bit of like, oh, again, type of thing. But I mean, if Paulson Adebo can can definitely get some significant playing time and and get right there early on, I like this pick. I think it's another another solid piece here adding to a really big position of need and the thing I like is like you went offense and you went defense. So you're addressing both these needs right away. The two biggest needs, I think, right now on both sides, um, besides obviously edge. So I like that pick too. I think that solves both of those. And then, yeah, you know, you, you can obviously address some other positions later on, which we'll talk about. But overall, you address the big positions of need fairly early. And I like that. All right, cool. And so now there's no third round pick with staying right. at 21. So now we go to round four and I have the Colts selecting Josh Imator Behibi, another name that again, we saw from my mock draft in the first round, but I am actually taking him further now into my draft than what I had him before. And he's the wide receiver from Illinois. And again, the reason why I have Imator Behibi here is because 6'2", 210 pounds, a pretty decent sized wide receiver and is a very vertical wide receiver. He's a guy that has made his living off of being able to go down the field, burn people. And then even when he did, doesn't burn them is able to catch the ball at the point of attack very, very well. And his biggest knock, and we said it before is basically just not a lot of route running has been done with him. He's not had a great selection of those, and he's oftentimes slow when he goes to certain kinds of routes like curls and ends. But who was the last person that we said had an issue with route running? And then we've seen him now tear up the NFL. That was DK Metcalf. And I feel like here with Josh, I'm not saying they're the same person, but you know, when you get into the NFL, oftentimes, even in college, sometimes depending on the scheme you're in and the system that you run in, in college, you oftentimes don't get a chance to learn these things or you know showcase that as often so maybe that's ultimately why but again a great athlete here with a lot of raw potential which is why i think right here in that fourth round you could go ahead and do that with a wide receiver at this pick versus trying to get one early that makes sense i mean you know, it kind of depends on what you do in free agency, obviously. You know, do you go address wide receiver? I think at this point, hey, you have that guy with that immense talent there. Um, I think it'd be a potentially good pickup there, honestly, at wide receiver. People have said wide receiver is one of the biggest needs on offense. Just some sort of threat on offense in terms of a pass catcher. So I like this pick because, yeah, it gives you that. He's more of a project kind of guy there in the fourth round, but I feel like you can kind of start doing that near those fourth, fifth, sixth round type of things. And the things that you've said, like the route running and things of that nature, those are all coachable, which is definitely a good sign. And, you know, I'd rather get a guy who has all the physical tools but just needs to be coached up as opposed to a guy that, you know, is is ready, but he just has physical limitations. And so with this guy, I don't see that being an issue at all. So, uh, yeah, I like this pick too. I, I think, you know, now you've solved a good chunk of your needs here within these first three picks, first four rounds here. All right, sweet. And now we're moving on to round five. And believe it or not, Cody, it's another Notre Dame guy. And all this right. time it's a guard, Tommy Kramer from Notre Dame here, 6'5", 
330 pounds. I mean, this guy is a behemoth on the inside and kind of like a Debo just knows how to play in almost any kind of run blocking or pass blocking scheme on the offensive line. Very versatile kind of guy. You know, again, what a lot of these linemen have issues with late in these rounds is sometimes they get out of position a little bit or their aggressiveness sometimes can be used against them. But Kramer has great build and Ballard's always looking to improve on the offensive line, right? doesn't matter if it's interior or it's the tackles or whatever, but you're always trying to find the next guy. And I think Kramer built with his size and being able to just adapt to whatever scheme is possible with, that the Colts might throw at him. Because remember, we like to run the ball. We like to run different offensive rotations when it comes to the passing. So, you know, what this guy is able to do is, is have flexibility. So I really think that Kramer here works as a interior offensive lineman late in this draft. Yeah, I mean, I'm not shocked at all by this pick because that's what the Colts need, right? They need, We've talked about it all last season. They needed depth, honestly. That's what they were lacking. They needed some depth. They had to pull some guys off the street. That's how bad their depth was last year. So, you know, you throw in a guy like him. I like that. I, I like it. He has the physical tools, another physical freak type of guy that uh, has that blue chip trait in terms of uh, just the size, the mere size of the guy. I mean, that's about Quentin Nelson size right there. I mean, obviously we're not – even close to comparing them to each other, not not a stretch. There's a reason why this guy's you're taking him in the fifth round, but you know physically he's all you want there at an offensive guard, and uh, that that's what you need. You know fundamentals can be taught, like we said. And Chris Strausser, the offensive line coach, right? He's helped improve some of these guys. We saw what he did with that right side of the offensive line, right? We saw what he did with Mark Glowinski and, and Braden Smith. Both of those guys had really up years this last year. And even like Danny Pinter, who was a fifth round pick this last year, like I thought he looked really good as well. So just helping your interior offensive line. I like that idea. I, I'm always a person that always thinks you can never have enough depth on your offensive and defensive lines. And I think Chris Ballard is of that same mind. So saying that I like this pick because it definitely just helps give you a little bit more insurance in case one of your players, one of your starting five does go down. Um, you feel like you have confidence that he can step in and, and do a pretty decent job. So yeah, good pick here. Hey, what's up guys? I want to take a pause from the video to talk about our sponsor for this video, Manscaped. Now, Manscaped is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineering tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million worldwide. And we have an exclusive offer for you, our listeners. 20% off plus free shipping with the code BTJ at manscaped.com. I'll say it again with code BTJ at manscaped.com. And Derek, Manscaped hooked both you and I up with some pretty cool tools, right? I know you have one there. I have a couple here to, to keep it fresh down there. But Derek, I can't tell you, man, how many times, you know, you've been down there, you've been shaving, you're trying to figure that stuff out. And it's the worst. Uh, it's the worst, man. It is. And Manscaped worst. definitely is a great resource there to, to help you have confidence moving forward, man, and doing that. I know it's never fun, uh, but Manscaped yeah, exactly. makes it a little bit more bearable. Well, thankfully, Cody, I've not had any issues when it comes to that yet. Thanks to Manscaped. <laughs> and the best thing that I've had with that was the Lawnmower 3.0. It's the new device that helps you. It's the third generation trimmer featuring a cutting ceramic blade that helps to keep you from having accidents down there. The best thing for your grooming experience. It also comes with an LED light, helps you mm. to make sure you see where you're going. Obviously you need that. And it's also waterproof. I don't have any water on me right now, but I would definitely show you. Helps with your shower and grooming experience. Makes it so much easier. Obviously, don't use it on your face. That's just nasty. I'm just letting y'all know that now. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do Don't it. do that. Also, guys, with your package that you would also get comes with a lot of other things that you would need to help with your grooming experience. You have preserver and reviver to help with the family jewels to make sure everything is fresh. And also Manscaped throws in a bunch of other things, including boxer briefs and a travel to go bag for to be able to bring your stuff on the road with you. Believe me, your balls will thank you. Cody, 
tell them how you, again how they can get started with their Manscaped experience. Absolutely. So 20% off and free shipping using the code BTJ, stands for Bring the Juice, BTJ at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code BTJ. Unlock your confidence and always have the right tools with Manscaped. Thank you to all of you, including Manscaped, for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out, guys, and enjoy the video. All right, with our round six pick, it's going to be Jamie and Sherwood, the safety from Auburn. So some more help in the secondary here. And the reason I picked Sherwood is the way he plays the game of football. It's a lot like what the Colts really like their safeties to do. They're instinctual. They really like to hit hard. That's kind of been the concept of Blackman and Kari Willis. These guys love to hit, and Sherwood is a very aggressive tackler at the point of attack. That's mm-hmm. just his style. But again, just the big knock, and this is what's going to happen here when you get into safeties later on, is just having an issue with some of his abilities in deep coverage. That's going to be the big issue here. You know, that's why I pick later, but a kind of guy that. You know, you could plug into special teams, help put in certain situations. You know that this guy is going to go out there and hit hard every single time, which is what I really like about this pick. So Sherwood at round six for me later on. Seems like a guy that you could put into the box as well, if need be. And Mm -hmm. we don't know the future with like Anthony Walker and some of these other linebackers that, you know, if he is gone, would take his place. So maybe that that you can play him a little bit at that if you feel like you need to at certain points. So I like that. Just a kind of versatile piece there. Another hard hitter, another guy that just, yeah, he lays it all on the line. And that's what the Colts want in their safeties. So I like that, especially because you're going to be probably losing Tavon Wilson and Malik Hooker, two of your safeties, into free agency this year. I think it's good just for a depth standpoint and then special teams i mean we all know ballard loves he specifically drafted some guys last year in these later rounds to just play special teams now yes. you know jordan glasgow's one and then isaiah rogers isaiah rogers showed you a little more potentially on the field but jordan glasgow specifically was a special teams type of guy so i like that i always like adding to the special teams we've said it a thousand times on this podcast special teams wins and loses you games And if you can get guys like that that aren't afraid to put their body on the line like him, I mean, I like it. And the last pick that I have here, round seven, is Luke Farrell, a tight end out of Ohio State. He reminds me a lot of Jack Doyle. He really does remind me a lot of Jack Doyle, just a younger version of Jack Doyle. He's a good blocker at the line of scrimmage. They use him a lot in run blocking. Most people know that Ohio State's not very friendly with their tight ends when it comes to the passing game. They're usually mostly using their receivers versus anything else. So Farrell's never had a phenomenal chance to really show up and show people what he could do. But if anyone has any questions about what this guy is able to do in a game, just go watch the Clemson game against Ohio State this last year. Go watch it. He has two touchdowns, one where he literally had to was standing there, had to go up and get it, and just stood there and ripped it out of the defender's hands when they both got the, their hands on it, but just ripped it out of his hands like as if he was like the dad and that was the kid. It's just <laughs> simply like that. And then there's another one. Justin Fields throws a beautiful ball across the middle that Farrell had to dive and catch for. Great hands. Luke Farrell has some very good hands. Hasn't had a lot of chances to really showcase that, but Farrell has some really good hands. So again, it's another younger version of Jack Doyle's, like uh, as what I like to comp him as. He's not going to take the roof off anyone. He's not going to outrun anyone, but he's got good size to be a blocker. He's very reliable in the pass game if you want to do some of those under routes or in the red zone. So Luke Farrell here for the last pick to round out the draft. You made fun of me in my last mock draft for taking a tight end. I got to make fun of you. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, should have sure. known you would have picked a tight end here. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, no, I think it's good. I think you need another tight end. You know, you mentioned he's a willing blocker. I mean, that is what the Colts like in their tight ends. Like they like those guys that are kind of the do it all type of guys. I mean, Jack Doyle is a prime example of that. The guy you already mentioned him, but if this guy's kind of like a Jack Doyle 2.0 man, I mean, I'm good with that because it's like. 
in the seventh round, he's never going to do anything special, right? But mm-hmm. if he's a solid contributor, that's a win in the seventh round. If you can get a guy that, that contributes just even blocking. So I like that from that standpoint. And we know Jack Doyle's getting a little bit older. So maybe the guy, I, I don't know. I don't know him very well, but you know what? Like anything's possible. And if he's a similar clone to that, we know how much the Colts like to get Jack Doyle involved normally. So uh, I, I like this. I like this getting a tight end here. I think it's a position that nobody's really talking about that could, could potentially be a position of need. So, yeah, like it, man. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for my mock draft 2.0 for if the Colts decide to stick with pick number 21 versus trading back. Probably going to have another one here soon with the trade back option. So let us know what you guys think about this one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, go Colts. Yeah.